Hello, my friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Thank you guys so much for joining me once again. There's a lot of stuff happening out there, a lot of stuff on the is there life out there or are we alone in this great big multiverse? So we see over here a former NASA scientist says they found life on Mars back in the 70s. So we have seen so many people come out after the fact. Phil Schneider, for those of you that are aware of him, of course, we have um, Dr. Stephen Greer. We have so many different people uh, that have coming out from being either former NASA employees, former government officials, you know, like the Canadian uh, gentleman, Paul Hellier. Uh, just countless people have come right out and said, you know what? Yeah, there's there's life out there. It's right here, too. It's been here the whole time. It's been watching us, interacting with us. So anyway, this former NASA scientist says, yeah, we've we already discovered life over 40 years ago on Mars. And, you know, there's been so many people that have seen strange things on Mars. And then, of course, you know, in the photos that we uh, we are given from supposedly the landings there. Of course, many people think those landings happened somewhere in Arizona or Nevada, and it's not even Mars. Maybe it's New Mexico, you know, in the first place. So it's interesting. Now, there's been all sorts of questions coming up about, you know, did Mars have life at one point in time? You know, they've come straight out and said, yeah, there's evidence of seas, and, and apparently Mars was covered in water at one point. And we looked over here at soil samples that they've they've gotten. Now, some say that we have proof through soil samples. Some say no. Uh, of course, I'll have all the links for you guys as well. We know never a straight answer is part of the machine that covers up the truth of our reality here. So... Obviously, they're going to give us what they want to give us. And, of course, we've seen uh, those interesting Navy videos of Navy pilots basically saying, what the hell is that? It's not ours. And over here you see this object discharged an unknown chemical into the air. And this is a long cigar-shaped, chem uh, well, UFO, and this is from the Chilean Navy releases, and this came from 2014. And I had said to you guys before, I mean, I, I don't know if you guys really know all the history of these flying objects in the sky going back to the Middle Ages. People have pi pictured them, they've painted them, of these objects in the sky at very, very interesting times. So is that evidence that we are not alone. And so here we see a UFO expert claimed that photos taken by NASA's Opportunity rover on Mars showed an alien creature slightly resembling a rabbit. According to the expert, the alleged creature was alive when the photo was taken. NASA has footage of it as it was moving. And if this is supposed to be some sort of rock, I cannot imagine how a rock could get shaped like that. Can you? How could a rock get shaped like that and so here is again more video for you guys to check it out see what you think you know there's been a lot of people that say they have seen uh, unusual objects like i said in these photos very pretty interesting those do look like bunny ears they sure do they sure do there's a lot of anomalous things in our solar system as well here we see UFO seekers are flocking to a huge Buddha statue in Thailand, saying it's home to a wormhole that aliens use to travel to different dimensions. So alien tourism appears to be gaining popularity around the world, and some offbeat travelers believe that a remote hilltop in Thailand holds the key to connecting with the extraterrestrial world. So Khao Kala in Nakhon Sawan, which translates to City of Heaven, is located just three hours north of Bangkok and has become a hotspot for tourists looking to experience the supernatural. Several news outlets, including CNN and Vice, have recently traveled to the area where some people believe humans can telepathically communicate with aliens. 
The hill is located amongst a sugarcane plantation, and according to the Bangkok Post, believers in the supernatural site say it hides a secret wormhole that allows aliens to travel between different dimensions. So believers practice meditation at Hill 145 where a giant Buddha statue sits below a statue of a seven-headed snake. Several other Buddha statues, including one called Buddha's Footprint, stand nearby. So Samjit Raypeth, a member of the Kaukala group or UFO Kaukala, a group that believes that the area possesses supernatural quali- qualities, told the Post back in 2015 that members practiced strict Buddhist principles and were able to contact aliens from Pluto and another planet called Logu Kata Patak Tigong, located somewhere in the Milky Way. They have high virtues and morals, she told the Post. The only way to make contact with them is to practice Dhamma, which is Buddhist teachings, to the highest levels. According to CNN, followers of this ideology believe that people can hear the aliens through meditation and have described the aliens as slender, little, silvery humanoids. Some followers are reported seeing UFOs and silhouettes of figures on the hilltop, while others say they were actually spun around by alien powers. There is no substantive evidence that the site has supernatural or alien qualities or, of course, that aliens exist at all. Wasana Chuen Samnan, a lead campaigner for the extraterrestrials, told CNN that aliens from Pluto are made of energy and have expressed concern for the devastation on the Earth. Loku aliens, he says, have knowledge of high technology and present in physical form. He says Pluto's alien leader claimed Buddha was the greatest human mind. According to a local daily, Kao Saad, a member of the UFO Kalkala predicted that World War III would break out by 2022. Wasana told CNN that aliens had promised to take care of a select few survivors in the event of such fallout. Authorities have not taken kindly to the overcrowding of tourists on the hilltop, which houses several Buddhist holy sites. And so this is interesting. You know, there are definitely sacred places. Uh, I could definitely say after visiting Sedona, that felt like a sacred place. And we are planning to do a Shasta trip, hopefully sometime before it gets too cold. Uh, That is most definitely a sacred place as well. And um, there are many sacred places across the globe. There are many ley lines, energetic ley lines, which really are like the nadis or the channels in the energy body of the earth. And of course, the earth itself has chakras as well, Uh, has basically these funnels that are always drawing in life force energy into the earth itself. So interesting here that we see this. And of course, many people will laugh at that totally. And then other people won't. NASA Apollo photos show heart-shaped alien ships orbiting earth, UFO expert claims. And uh, here you could ha- look at have a look at this video as well. Things are really coming out. And there's video here as well where you can see the ships. Um, Things are really coming out. Many people believe we are in disclosure. Many people believe we are getting ready for the great deception. And, um, you know, what do you guys think about all that? Do you think we're getting ready for some huge cosmic disclosure? Aliens are real. Extraterrestrials are real. Interdimensionals are real. And... An alien invasion perhaps is imminent? Or do you guys, you know, do you guys think it's all just BS? That there's no truth behind it? You guys know the Black Knight? That's an interesting object. Definitely is up there. Uh, Curious. A remnant? Was it a remnant? Was it a satellite that was put up there by humans maybe? But from a previous civilization that has long since been gone. Now, you remember that second interstellar object coming in? Well, this one, they say, looks pretty normal. Looks like a typical comet. And so this is C-2019 Q4 Borisov. And now they've been watching it long enough to say that, yes, this does look like a relatively typical comet. does not appear to be what we saw with Oumuamua. Uh, and we'll have to see how this transverses as it comes in closer to the sun. 
The thing about Oumuamua was that it behaved exactly as we thought an interstellar spaceship would behave and basically used the gravity of the sun to gain speed and slingshot off in a totally different direction. I still think that, you know, I, I, I still think that that one just showed too much characteristics of being a ship if they're telling us the truth. And that's a whole other subject as well. Because what are they sharing with us that is truth? What are they sharing with us that perhaps is getting us looking in the wrong direction? Over here we also see the mystery of moon water. And before we get into that, I just want to go back to that uh, the UFO phenomenon going on over around that Buddhist statue in Thailand, uh, it does remind me of very much what my a good friend of mine was telling me about that would happen in Peru. So he grew up close to Cusco in Peru in the mountains, and it was just common knowledge to the people in that area that there were beings that would come from the sky and they would come down and they would go into the earth there. And that that was an area that you could enter the inner earth. And that there were civilizations, there are civilizations inside the earth. And these beings, which appeared in these light ships or ships of light, which you could see, he said, almost on a nightly basis. So you, you can almost always see one going into the same sort of area up in the mountains and then disappearing. And he saw some pretty up close. And I do believe him totally. He is completely a very, very honest guy. And so it just got me thinking about that. And if you talk to locals, you know, it's it's no big deal. This has been going on ever since they could remember, their parents could remember, their parents' parents could remember as well. So the mystery of moon water, well, we've had a lot of interesting discoveries such now knowing that the moon is basically in our atmosphere that does that change everything for you the fact that the moon is now considered to be in our atmosphere interesting thought and many people think that the moon is really a big spaceship and uh, i've shared with you guys my experience at looking at the moon one night with uh, another person and we both were looking at it at the same time and it went completely blank we were looking at a moon that had a typical face with the craters and everything. And then it went blank. It just went blank, so there was no features on it at all. We looked at each other dumbfounded, looked back up. It was still blank. And then maybe five seconds later, it went back to having craters. And I swear, we were not drunk. We were not doing anything funny. <laughs> None of that at all. It was kind of like a glitch in the matrix. So as this is talking about the fact that there is uh, liquid, well, not liquid water, but there's grains of water ice on the moon. So, and, you know, it gives us thinking also about what we've learned about space itself. Because we were taught space is just a big vacuum. There's nothing out there. But now we know, you know, there's tons of viruses and bacteria just floating around in space. And think about, you know, what the sun does. And how, you know, it's made of helium and hydrogen. And just think about the waves of hydrogen all around. You know, the building blocks for life are all around us, all around us. And life, in my opinion, is abundant out there. So they say the first baby could be born in space within 12 years. A startup company claims it's planning to send women on 24 to 36 hour missions just so they could give birth in orbit. And there's a lot of scientists that would say that's a horrible idea. You're going to be exposed to all sorts of radiation. You're probably going to have birth defects. But Dr. Egbert Edelbrock, CEO of Spaceborne United, he's going to, he wants women to go up and, and deliver in orbit and uh, do this experiment. So obviously this would not be something that most mainstream scientists would be behind. But this is what we have going on with the privatization of um, you know the whole space industry and, and it branching off in so many different directions. 
pretty interesting times to be alive for sure. So I want to thank uh, the latest um, patrons here at Patreon, and I just want to thank everybody for your support. Uh, thank you for helping it grow and support the channel through these times. As always, my friends, like, share, subscribe. Please do jump over to the second channel as well, uh, EE Arts, and subscribe there as well. As always, I look forward to your comments. God bless and namaste.